So my secret mission is to teach everybody that you don't have to be subject to the thoughts that are in your head about you that say nasty things about you all the time. That's a good one. Like, yeah, yeah we are these amazing, phenomenal beings, but apparently 85% of the world has low self-esteem. Like most of us just feel a little bit unhappy about ourselves and our condition in our world most of the time. Yeah. And that is not because the reality of us, it's the story that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And so you have the opportunity to change the relationship between the thoughts that are in your mind. Like for most people, your thoughts just think you, and that's not actually the way it needs to be. You can shift that relationship with your own thoughts and choose the contents of your mind, choose the story of yourself, and choose what you wanna do in your life. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are at the Transformative Technology Conference. We've been talking to so many epic people that care about humanity, care about wellness, care about well-being, care about meditation, so much, so much. I'm super excited to be sitting down with Ariel Garten now. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us on the show. My pleasure. The founder of Muse. Yes. yes, yes, and this is really important technology. I'm really excited to talk about it and for you to teach us about it. It's going to sure. be a lot of fun. So, all right, before we talk about Muse, this is like 10 years in the making. It's a long time. It's a long, long time in the making to, you know, to build. And the, Muse is a, a, is a company of inter... In, Interaxon. Interaxon, Muse yeah. is the device that Interaxon makes. And then does Interaxon make other stuff? Um, we licensed the technology to Smith Optics. We made a pair of glasses with them. Oh, cool. Um, and you may see other things from us over time, but right now, yeah, it's main needs. focus. Yeah, okay, so yeah, th so that was a good small bit. Um, we'll get there. Prior to getting there, who are you? How did you get to become who you are today? So tell us about that. Big question. Yeah. So my name is Ariel. Um, my background has always been in neuroscience, design, and a little bit of technology, and then over time, a lot of technology. I was always fascinated by how the world worked and more importantly, how we perceived the world and how we could transform ourselves through those perceptions. So I started in science, even in high school, I had a job in a research lab doing embryonic stem cell research in like grade 12. Um, and then at the same time, I always did art. I was fascinated by making stuff. I had a clothing line, a little line of clothing that I sold to stores around Toronto and then New York. And then I went to school for neuroscience. At the same time, tried the clothing thing, had a larger line and then kept going on the science thing, worked in research labs looking at things like neurogenesis and ultimately tried to understand how it was that we perceive the world around us and we perceive ourselves. So I began to work with Professor Steve Mann, he's the accredited inventor of the wearable computer, mm. totally crazy amazing mm. dude who was a professor at University of Toronto and he had an early brain computer interface system. So a single EEG lead that you put on your head that you could then do stuff with. And in the very early 2000s, we started to collaborate by creating concerts with our mind. So we'd have 48 people at a time, all with a single EEG lead on their head, uh, who would modulate their brain state, typically just relaxing. And by doing so, we would trigger changes in the music. Mm -hmm. So 48 people at a time mm -hmm. could be creating this collective concert based on the modulation of brain state. And we did a whole bunch of these and like, kept going deeper and deeper into it. And I stood back and said, like, wow. We are literally controlling the world with our brains. Mm -hmm. And the world needs to know about this. Like, mm -hmm. how is this just going on in the lab? Like, how doesn't everybody know that you can control the world with your brain? Mm -hmm. And so I got together with my co-founders, Chris Amini and then Trevor Coleman. Mm -hmm. And we started to think about how we could really affect the world with this groundbreaking tech. And the first thing we thought is, OK, how do we show people that your mind is so powerful it could move something physical? Mm -hmm. So we created something called the levitating chair. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those 1960s ball chairs mm -hmm. with a winch on the ceiling and you'd mm -hmm. connect an EEG to the back of your head and by relaxing, it would increase your alpha waves. Mm -hmm. And the increase in alpha waves would trigger a signal that would cause the winch to rise. That's so and cool. so you'd go like that's a good up one to the sky. Because that's kind of what we do when we calm our minds and we fall into the alpha and theta states that we kind of we do kind of 
get closer to the clouds in a sense and mm -hmm. levitate. So that's a that's a good one. I the physical, yes. Yeah, so you have you know like all of those images of Indian gurus who could levitate, and you don't know whether it's real or not. And we're like, we could do this with technology. We could literally make a levitating chair as you would yeah. relax and get into a meditative state. The chair would rise, and it was amazing. From like a winch I bought at the hardware store, and it was totally terrifying because <laughs> it could like thug, like it would break at any moment. Um, and then from there, we said, okay, this is cool. Like, what's the biggest thing we can do? And so now this is about 2008, 2009, and the Olympics were coming to Canada, to Vancouver in 2010. We were in Toronto. And so we created a proposal that ultimately turned into us allowing people to control the lights on the CN Tower, mm. the Canadian Parliament buildings, mm. like mm -hmm. basically the White House of Canada, and Niagara Falls, you know, one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, and we we're going to let people do that from Vancouver, 2,000 miles away, mm. with their brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, these are great ways to get people to understand that they can yeah. make change like that with their brains. And, and we were, you know, a tiny startup of three people in a basement trying to figure out this tech. Okay, so, so you got that contract? We got the contract. That's a big deal. And within six months and a very small amount of funding from the Canadian government actually created this massive installation that really let you do this. Like you could slip on an EEG and sit at Vancouver and watch a huge big stream that was showing you live what was going on in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And you could focus, increase your beta waves, and spin the lights on the tower. And then you could maintain that focus and it would spin faster. Or you could relax and then increase your alpha waves. And that would be the trigger to have it glow into a little pulsing star. Mm. And people all around you, into, like all around Toronto, would look up and see your brain. Like, you know, this extension of your yeah. mind projected yeah. all the way across the country, 1,800 yeah. feet yeah. up in the sky in the CN Tower, you know, like, yeah. one of the t was the tallest building in the world. Yeah. Like, that's you. And so from there, we said, like, holy shit, mm -hmm. this is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. we have the power to do so much with our minds. Yeah. And so we tried to explore every possible way that we could project ourselves into an object and try to interact with it. Um, and so we had like a Wheel of Fortune game, You'd focus and like the wheel would spin. Um, somebody programmed a Star Trek game. You know, there's this episode of Star Trek where um, everybody was taken over by this device that they put on their head that gave them a hit of dopamine when they shot a little disc into a tube. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Doesn't mm -hmm. Anyways, we recreated that. Um, we made a thought control toaster, uh, a water cooler. <laughs> nice beer tap, like literally everything we could think of. We had an entire room where as you would relax, the whole room would respond to you. So you would quiet, um, close your eyes and then the blinds would come down, the lights would get dimmer, the music would change, you would fall asleep, the blinds would then close. All these examples. So all of these things were incredible, you know, incredible examples of what our mind could do, but none of it was really practical. None of it was really gonna be a product that somebody was gonna use in their life. And what we really wanted to do with the technology was change people's lives, do something that was going to make your life palpably better every day. And then we recognized that through this process of teaching ourselves to focus and relax to control the technology, we were teaching ourselves to focus and relax, and we were learning to control this inner technology. Mm -hmm. And the best use of this tech was not to control the outside world, but to teach us to control our own inner worlds. Yes, yes. And this was, you know, the magic aha, the moment that led to this device. So we recognized that the best thing we could do was control our own minds and teach people to do that. And the best methodology that existed for that out there that had been tried and tried, tested for 2,000 years was meditation. And we all that know that meditation is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes significant gains in your body, your mind, your relationship, like every part of the world that's important to you, meditation can enhance. Yes. But like, nobody does it very 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 small percentage of the world and a much smaller percentage of the world actually does it regularly mm -hmm. and it's because typically when you try to sit down to meditate you sit there and you're like i'm meditating you're like i don't know what the fuck i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> this is kind of weird is anybody looking at me i think i should probably get up now this really isn't meditating isn't it i'm not good at meditating yeah that meditation thing was weird it seems to work for other people but maybe that's for me <laughs> You get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wanted to create something that was really going to change that paradigm, that was really going to show you what goes on in your mind during meditation and what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and make it easy. So we created a tool that gives you real-time feedback on your meditation. So you know what goes on in your mind, 
what you're supposed to do and guides you. And then it's very data driven. So during the course of the experience, you have a real, real time feedback that lets you know what's going on in your mind. And then after the fact, you actually see your data. Yeah. So to us, this was the best thing we could do to shift humanity. Yes. The best and highest application of any technology we could think of. I like how you went from doing examples that were a little bit more about just experiential learning and to playing around with things and showing people that they could control something 2,000 miles away with their brains to putting together what you want to be one of the most practical uh, uses of being able to tune inward, understand what's going on inward. And yeah, you gave a really good example. Like we, t talking to people about meditation, it can be a challenge in itself. Um, <laughs> people make fun of you, me, all the time uh, about it. And it's just, it's, it's very funny. Yeah, you did that. That was, that was, that was really funny. <laughs> Thank another you. one another other one I do is when you like when you sit and then all of those thoughts come to your head about what you have to do and then mm -hmm. you're just like I'm just going to go do those things instead. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, instead of actually just breathe, why would I just I breathe yeah. all the time? No, um, I need to do that thing. I need to respond to that person. I need to get that yeah. email. I need to go walk the dog. Yeah. So and it's and then it causes anxiety because as soon as you sit there, you're like, okay, I'm going to let my mind go blank. And in that blank canvas, things naturally arise. That's what our mind does. It's a generative, you know, organ. And so the thought that arises is eventually I need to walk the dog or something I need to do. And then you have a sense of anxiety that continues to rise until you go do that thing. Yeah. So you've got that like dog walking loop constantly going in your head and your anxiety yeah. is just rising and you're, me you're not meditating from that moment forward. Yeah. So we wanted to create something that could sit with you and teach you what to do with that and teach you to say, nope, it's okay. I'm going to come back to my breath. I'm going to sit here. That yeah. might feel like a sensation pulling me away, but rather than riding the anxiety of it, I'm going to experience the sensation, I'm going to let that go, and I'm going to bring my mind back. And it's not easy to do, but we gave you a methodology to practice doing yeah. it over and over again and actually build the practice. Because one needs to know when their mind is wandering mm -hmm. and get notified about it. And, and, uh, and it's just over and over again, I'm just so, it's just, because I've done, have you done Vipassana meditation? Yeah. Just, I just, it's just very strange that we are now, you know, using, in some extent it's weird to use technology to help us meditate when we ourselves are able to tell that our mind is wandering and just get better and better at focusing. But it's also very important because it onboards a lot of people into the practice. Um, so I was also thinking while you were talking about your experience in like, in fashion as well was really important with with the development mm -hmm. of this, I assume is that you're, you, d you definitely want something that people are actually going to wear. That, and this is tough because you got it. You have to. You have to wear this while meditating. While meditating, and if you want to, you can wear this more often than just meditation. So we have developers and hackers who do do that. So there's an open SDK you can get. So this is actually a clinical grade EEG. Yeah. So there's two channels here on the forehead, FP1 mm -hmm. and FP2, the reference is in the middle, FP0. And these are two channels back here as well. On the ears. Yep, so uh, on your temporal lobe, T9, T10. Mm -hmm. So you're getting like real research grade data. You know, we've done the experiments, you hook up a- So four electrodes? Yep, four channels. Four channels. Um, and you're getting real research grade data sent to your smartphone. And so we have lots of people who use it to do experiments, home experiments, what's my brain doing when? We also have lots of research labs that use it to do real neuroscience experiments. So there's about 175 papers that have been published using Muse as a device. Wow, that's yeah. huge, congrats. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So then, so then now, okay, now let's, let's get into this a little bit. So this is the Muse One. When mm -hmm. was the Muse One made? Um, so it was released in the end of 2014. Okay, okay. So it took like five years to put together the first. Yes. One. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's really tough to do so. Yeah, so there was a lot of challenges along the way. So one, you have to, this hardware did not exist before. This form factor didn't exist didn't before. Exist, yeah. So we had to create an EEG that was going to fit reliably on everybody's head and good, get good signal quality dry sensor. So yeah. when we do experiments and connect and, uh, you know, see how the, sensor, the signal is on this versus like a biosemi, which is a gold standard EEG system, they're using wet prep with gel and goop and this is just totally dry sensor. I saw, yeah, you push it more to, uh, you push and pull for yeah. adjusting, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the dry sensing versus the Yep, so we had to create sensing. all the dry sensing technology, 
then we have to find an algorithm that's going to, there you go, yeah. it's going to reliably detect meditation, focus attention versus mind wandering, um, then create an app and experience that has a metaphor that helps you understand it. So the metaphor we use is your mind is like the weather. Mm. So when you're thinking and distracted, you yeah. actually hear it as stormy. And as you come to quiet focused attention, it quiets the storms. Yeah. Then when your mind picks up and you begin to wander again, the storm picks up. So yeah. you actually hear the sound of your own mind as your notification to bring your mind back to your breath, to come back to your focused attention. And where am I looking to get a notification? Um, so it's audio feedback. Audio so this feedback, sends yeah. data to your phone, and then your phone translates the sound of your mind into the guiding sounds of weather. Oh, and it re oh so you play a storm. Yep. Or you play a bird's chirping or something. Yes. Yeah, so, so it is the sound of your mind as a storm. As a storm. And when your mind is yes. stormy, you hear the storm. And as your yep. mind is calm, the storm quiets. And, and oh, this, what do you hear when a storm is quiet? Just like the gentle lapping of waves. Oh, just the yeah. waves. Oh, waves. There's, and then there's if you're a really team that focused. did the visual of this. They, they, they were at Brain Mind um, in, October, in, uh, in September. Uh, just w uh, wearing an EEG and then you would see a, a, a projector that showed the waves or then clouds, a storm. Oh I yeah, we've done that for years. You have been doing that for years? Okay, cool. So, yeah. That's interesting that... It's been, some, we've had yeah. many years of iterations of this. So at, earlier on we actually had a visual, but meditation is a eyes closed experience. Um, so we no longer have a visual for it, but we used to have literally, oh, you usually, yeah. you literally have clouds and you could even we would do it in a 3D room. You would sit in a room 3D yeah. projected with clouds all around you, and you could oh, then, wow. as you quiet, the clouds move away, and then as your mind becomes active, the clouds return. Yeah. So we we played with dozens Tons. and dozens yeah. and dozens of implementations. And is this manufactured in China? It is. In Shenzhen. No, in Shaman. In, in a really lovely factory. Sh Shaman. 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 Yeah. In a factory that's like highly supportive of all of the workers. I've been there many times. Actually, not many times. My team has been there many times. I've okay. only been there a few times. Cool. But why, like the rest of my team has spent months living months there. Months. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Just to make sure this comes out right. Yeah. 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 It o it always blows my mind to to yeah. Hardware is very 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 interesting because of stuff like that. Yeah. Manufacturing overseas and yeah. Most most people don't don't get that so much. Now, there's also obviously a software component to this, but mm -hmm. let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about hardware stuff. What was the battery life in this one? Uh, so it's four and a half hours continuous use. Yeah, that's great. And then um, the fit it fit really well. It was really comfortable. You know, it's very comfortable. And so, what else about the hardware should we know prior before we move to software? So these are four channels you said. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have a zero, a channel? What is a this reference. Called? So what does a e reference mean? In EEG, you're always measuring relative to the reference. So you want to, typically the reference is the ears yeah. in older EEG systems. Yeah. Um, so you want somewhere where you're getting your biological data because your skin, your, your, your body has a bioelectric potential. Yeah. So you're looking at the value of the brain activity minus the value of the general bioelectric potential. Oh, oh, okay. So everything is subtracted by. Yeah, got it, got yeah. it. It's, it's, so it's in reference it's to. It's in reference to. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Because that normal spot could be could be generating a certain amount of bioelectric activity. Okay, and then so that's on every EEG. Is yep. there's a reference every point? Every EEG has a reference point. A ref. And then... A ref if you're hip to the lingo. If you're hip to the lingo, yeah. <laughs> to the EEG log. Yeah, yeah. So how many of these did you guys... So when did Muse 2 come out? So Muse 2 came out 10 days ago. Fresh off the shelf. Damn. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank Congrats. you. Congrats, yeah. Thank you. That's four years later. It takes a four while. Four years yeah, later. Four years later. Now... Now, before we talk about that, you know, that hardware upgrade, um, what is going on with the software on the software side of things? So you're taking in electrical, so you're taking in bioelectric signatures from the four channels, mm -hmm. two behind the ear, two on the prefrontal cortex right here. Mm -hmm. And then you're taking that data and you're 
making sense of it. You're taking mm -hmm. that those lecture students and making sense of it. So now, I guess, walk us through what it looks like to try and make sense of, of that data. So what we're looking for is focused attention versus mind wandering. Is, so that, is, that, is that pretty much the clearly what you're looking it's for? It's very clearly what we're looking and for. And nothing else? Yeah, no, okay. so you can't use this for open monitoring. Okay, so that's what it's, it's called, open monitoring. So there's this. focused attention. Yeah. Um, like a shamatha or a vipassana practice. Yeah. Then the next step typically is open monitoring. So once you train your attention on a single point, then you have this trained attention which you can begin to move around the room, for example. So that would be an open monitoring practice. Compassion meditation is a separate practice, which is a separate neural signature, um, where you're you know, focusing on your heart, for example, and trying to engender compassion. Yeah, yeah. So that's so a this, different... That's those di are all different practices. Interesting. So. So you have to follow a certain practice when you do this. Yeah, so what this is built on is a focused attention on the breath. So you focus, yeah. it could actually be what, any Vipash single point, well, which is, is Vipassana, yep. Okay, okay. And so it could be any breath. single point. Oh, so any point on your, not just nostrils, you're, you can go any, any. Yeah, any single point attention, but we say on the breath, because that's the most common. Common, yeah. So you focus your attention on your breath, your okay. mind wanders, and then as a meditator, your job is to notice that your mind has wandered and return it to the breath. Correct. And that act of noticing and returning, that's actually yeah. like doing the work of work the meditation. Workout, exactly. That's the workout. Yeah, that's yeah. the workout of the meditation. Yeah. So in a standard meditation, your mind begins to wander, and if there's no one there to remind you that it's wandered and remind you that you're meditating, it might be, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. Ten before minutes. You get, yeah, before really you're bad. like, oh, right, I've been thinking about that problem of work. Back to meditating. Yeah, yeah. With Muse, it cues you Instantly, instantly that you've yeah. wandered within half yeah. a second. And so if in a regular 10 minute meditation session with without technology you might get in, you know, five or ten returns. With Muse you can get in fifty returns, like literally fifty reps at the gym. Yeah. So it really hones that quality of attention. It really That's teaches cool. you very instantly to notice your distractions and bring it back, bring it back. That's and so cool. people very quickly learn the skill because first of all you now know what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And two, you're really tightly cued into what it is that you're doing and cued to come back. That's really interesting. This practice of, you know, 2,500 years is, uh, they're very adamant about keeping it clean. And, and uh, it, 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 it's very interesting to think about, because I always think about how technology, like Muse, can, you know, get 50 reps in instead of three reps. You can learn how to meditate much faster. Um, Psychedelics are also very interesting to explore while meditating. All these, th and it's just it's just interesting. I wonder if there will be an augmentation to the like vipassana practice at any point, you know, or um, because that doesn't that does interestingly make a lot of sense that I could very quickly in the first couple of days focus because I hear I'm hearing a storm yeah. every time that it wanders. Yeah, and so. We're not seeking to change an ancient practice. Like all of that wisdom is incredibly valid, incredibly important. Yeah. Like they figured it out. Yeah. We're just giving you some training wheels to understand what that process is. Yeah. And to understand and hone that process. And so as a meditator, you're a consciousness explorer. You know, it is your job to have metacognition, to be able to see your thoughts. Yeah. And so we're just giving you some cues here to help you actually have that metacognition. Yeah. So people who are expert like beginners love it because they're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do and now it makes sense. And then uh -huh. experts love it because you can actually get a new level of perspective on your thoughts and on your awareness. And the idea is, you know, you learn the practice and then the whole gateway of meditation is open to you. Because so many people, you know, I, I know for myself before I really like started a real meditation practice, um, I would read books about meditation and be like, that's cool. I'd go to sits. I'd sit in a temple and be like, I'm not totally sure what I'm supposed to be doing here, but I feel cool being here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only once I actually started through using Muse, really building a meditation practice yeah. and getting it, then everything that I had read before, like 2,000 years of wisdom, made sense. I was like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Okay, now I experience it. Now I can go into this. Now I can, st now I can start doing open monitoring and actually do it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. It, now now all of this stuff is engaging to me because I get it, it's in me. Whereas before it was just external words. So, you know, the goal of this is to be a gateway or to be a, you know, to be a mirror, to be a lens. Mm -hmm. It's not to be an overall solution. It's, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. to, like, open yeah. the doors. Yeah. It's and a good it really way to put does. it. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like, uh, yeah, I like, I like talking to you about it because I feel like you're, you know, you're really, you're really open to, to 
all of the different walks of the of meditation. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's cool. Um, so, so let's okay. So let's start. Let's talk about the software a little bit more then. Um, yeah, because there's so many ways to get up the mountain. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so many ways to get up the mountain. So many ways to get. None of them are. There's a million ways. Yeah. So. So now, okay, so now what, so this is focus. So you're talking about focus attention. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's about, um, you're, you're looking at versus open monitoring. So, so this is focused attention yes. versus mind wandering. So that's, Vers that's Versus mind wandering, but open monitoring is when you take the signal that you're receiving from a channel and that you're able to analyze a bunch of different things with it. So we don't do that with the Muse. Correct. That's a, that's a skill that you then learn, uh, that your technology lets you do. Yeah. yeah. So normal EEG headset, when I'm putting mm -hmm. on a normal whatever 48 or whatever mm -hmm. channels there are on the You know, when I just put on a normal 48 channel EEG headset, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So like when, when does every Tuesday. When does every Tuesday. When you put on one of those, um, is that, is, is, is the, the what, I'm tr what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is an electrode on that, is one of the channels on that 48 heads, channel headset, is that, that channel is the same as this channel, right? From the or same spot on the head. From, yeah. So Muse yeah, right is going to be on your forehead. Right if you put one of those 48 channels yeah. right next to it, you would get. And, you're, and are you getting the same readout yep. too? You are. Yep, you get okay. the same signal. And then, but your software only looks for attention, uh, focus, or mind wandering. Mm hmm Okay, but you're getting more information than just totally. that. Totally, it's a yeah. Okay, it's okay. a clinical grade EEG, so it's gotcha. you know, so you it's could getting be full getting spectrum information. Tons of other info. Yeah. and there's an okay. open API that developers can use to do whatever you there want. Is. Oh, cool. And, but then the Muse okay. application, the Muse meditation application, is specifically looking for focused attention versus mind wandering. Yes. We okay. have another app called Muse Direct okay. that lets you stream live uh, your raw EEG signal oh. um, or do real-time oh, cool. FFTs on your EEG signal. What's so FFT? You can, um, fast Fourier transform. So that's how you take the raw signal uh -huh. and you break oh, it oh. into the standard bands, alpha, beta, theta, oh. delta. Oh, sweet. Yep. Okay, so FFT. Fast Fourier, Fourier transform. transform. Take raw EEG data and show it into from yep. beta to gamma. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Gamma to delta. Gamma to delta. Yeah. Okay. From the G to the D. From the G to the D. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so, so okay, cool. So then your software is looking for folks. So now, what does it now? What does what does it look like when you're focused versus mind wandering? How do you? What does it is mind wandering like this? So it's a like fast frequency. So it's at this point, it's a machine learning classifier. Um, okay. So we started by looking at the brains of expert meditators and having them note when they were in focused attention, when they were in mind wandering, and that's how we began training the classifier. Okay. Then we added novices, intermediates, novices doing the same task, and now we have millions and millions and millions of sessions of meditation. Awesome. Um, and so taking that. And taking into account, you know, what somebody looks like prior to meditation and then during their meditation, we've built a classifier that's able to look at focused attention versus mind wandering. And it's not like the previous approach was, well, meditation is alpha with a little bit of theta coherence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've thrown that out the window. Yeah. This is like, let's look at everything going on in the brain over millions and millions of sessions of focused attention versus mind wandering and then come up with the, come up with the algorithmic hypothesis from there. Cool. So then, okay, so it was uh, um, people were going to a state of deep meditation or focus and then saying, I'm in, I'm in that state. And then, or my mind's been wandering for a like minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, awesome. And then are they wearing the, the audio is either coming from the phone, from the, from the app, mm -hmm. from the app on the phone, um, and then they can have headphones in or not, and mm -hmm. they can hear either waves or like lightning or something? So we, we actually have five different soundscapes oh. with more coming. Oh, okay. So you can be in a rainforest, and so oh. when your mind is wandering, the rain picks up, and when it's quiet, the rain gets quiet. You can be on the beach, and when your mind is wandering, you hear the crashing of the waves, yeah. and then when your mind is quiet, you know, you, it gets quiet just to the lapping of water. Oh, cool. You can be in a city park. Some people like the city park meditation, and so you hear your mind busy, like, you know, the busy, buzzing city, Whoa. or quiet, like, you know, the little bird sitting next to you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Those are good. I like yeah. those, yeah. So people choose the soundscape that most, you know, they most identify their mental state with, um, and the metaphor is really powerful. I mean, it, 
feels like this is your mind that you're you're hearing. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. Being able to hear your mind. Yeah, that's a cool way to put it. And also, you get to pick the soundscape. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Nice. I like the design of the soundscapes too. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty awesome. And then, are we able to also um, show the app as well on on the show? And then, in the meanwhile, this packaging is freaking awesome. I really Thank like you. this packaging. Meditation made easy. I'm used to the brain sensing headband. Is this French? It is. We're translated into French, German, Spanish, Italian, and Japanese is coming. Wow. So we work, have users all over the world. Like we have millions users. of users. Ha. <laughs> There've been millions and millions of sessions of meditation with Muse. That's great. And so it's yeah. global. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Mind real time brainwave EEG feedback. Heart tune into the heart rate. Breath learn how to use your breath to calm your mind, fight stress, and body discover your posture. You can help. Wow. So. So yeah. what's new about Muse too? Yes. So Muse 2 just launched, as I said, 10 days ago. This is crazy. And this has been the most extraordinary journey that I've been on with my team in the last yeah. four years. So yeah, you know, we got course. the Muse, Muse 1 out. It went out, we're like, oh my God, you know, you're so nervous when your first product goes out. Totally. You don't know, you assume it's just gonna break and it's just gonna totally. like be garbage and you pray it's not. And it's shocking when it isn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like somebody used it three weeks later and like sent me a note. They're like, my life has changed. And I was like, what? This thing even turned, turned on? on? It held a charge? charge. This is crazy. I'm happy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Gosh, that feeling feels so good. I'm so happy you had that. Thank it's you. It's a lot of work that leads to those moments. Yeah. yeah there was a lot of work. like, as the emails were coming in, there was just tears like, wow, like not only can this thing turn on, but people are actually yeah, using yeah. it and finding value. Like yeah. that is the dream. You don't imagine the dream's actually gonna come true. <laughs> yeah. Four years is a long time, so you must yeah. have sold like a couple thousand of them. Thousands and thousands and thousands, thousands and, and thousands, thousands yeah. of them. And then at two ninety nine was the price point. It, so it came out at two ninety nine, and then over time we've been working really hard to bring down the price. I mean, the goal is to make it as accessible as possible. Yeah. So now Muse One is down to about one ninety nine. One ninety nine, and this is out for two ninety nine. And this now. is out for two forty nine. Two forty nine now. Yeah. Cool. So with all the improvements in like yeah. supply chain that we've made during the last four years, we were able to make Muse Two yeah. with more sensors and even cheaper than when the first one wow. came out. Wow. Let's yeah. let's check it out. Let's do it. So this is the baby. The box is much smaller than the original. The packaging's great. Thank you. Yeah. And there are multiple languages. Yeah. So this is Muse 2. It's smaller. Wow, that's so small. Yeah, smaller and lighter than the original Muse. Wow. And it has... Dang, that's a lot lighter. Yeah. Dang, this is very pretty. Thank you. Wait, they didn't make you write all of those, all of that stuff on the inside? You, you might even have a prototype one, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, you, normally on the inside Side here have we have all, all the serial stuff. numbers and CE. Yeah, they have all the, all you, the yep. stuff written on, the, on yep. the inside, yeah. Yeah, this, this one is, is actually even one of the prototypes. This is the Muse one, and then there's the channels, and then there's two here on the ear. And then this is like, you know, this is quite thick in comparison to it's still pretty tiny for a, you know, yeah, <laughs> EG on your head. Is. Oh yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, this is, yeah, <laughs> it, compared to this one. <laughs> it's just crazy that I'm saying that. I know, yeah. I know, yeah. 20 years ago I'd be murdered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like this EEG that I can hold yeah. with one right. hand. With one hand. It's just too, too big. Too big. Yeah. yeah, so this is, you know, a lot thinner. So now, okay, so now let's, let's, let's unpack the, Let's unpack this. Is this where the charger is? Yep. Oh, that's where the charger is. So actually is. that's super cool. So that's the charger. And we brought back a feature from very early Muses that we micro did. micro USB? Micro USB. Yeah. Charge there. And you can even put two additional ports in. Oh, what do so you we mean? So make, we make these cool oh. EEG oh, sure. that uh, plug into a micro USB. So you can add additional EEG sensors anywhere on the head. If you're like, oh, you know, a neurofeedback sure. professional oh, sure. or oh, a hacker oh, cool. or a neuroscientist. As in you can plug, plug in more. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, that's interesting. Extension port. Oh, extension port. Stuff. Yeah. So Chris stuff. Amini, the CTO, my co-founder, yeah. that's his genius, like USB extension port. That's brilliant, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Now, now wait, I didn't ask you this. How, how do these pieces of, of rubber, mm -hmm. where's the, how do they sense electrical activity? Magic. Yeah. It's just magic. Is this, yeah. I, is this IP? <laughs> what what um, can so you these say? Are, so these are actually uh, conductive rubber. Conductive rubber? Yeah. Whoa. So 
when we were building this, there was like no obvious solution, solution yeah. and we started working around with novel materials and ultimately created these conductive rubber, comfortable conformal sensors. Yeah. So that was like one of the big leaps forward. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. So do, did you guys do tests on the conductive rubber in comparison to a... Yeah. So then we had to do a lot of work in the material science of it to actually yeah. get... Yeah great signal quality yeah, to yeah, get really exactly. high class signal quality because conductive rubber in and of itself is a not the best most consistent material yeah um so in this we used in the forehead um those are silver silver chloride sensors silver sulfur chloride silver 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 chloride S two silvers silver silver i think it's silver silver chloride yeah oh, interesting. Sil so it's silver and silver chloride oh silver s silver and silver chloride yeah interesting and okay. then in the new Muse, we actually were able to move to a new material, gold. That's literally gold. It's vi it's go which is better. It's like actually gold. Better yeah. conductivity. It's uh, actual gold. Slightly different conductivity pro um, properties. And we weren't able to do gold early on because the flex. So this is a flex strip in here. A flex strip. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So the electronics are actually within the strip. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when we made Muse in t uh, 2014. The technology was not yet there to be able to do this level of exposed gold sensor. Mm. Um, Interesting. And now there's just been technology advances in flexes that has allowed us to do that. And this is the. And heart, that's the heart rate sensor. Heart rate sensor. So rate that's sensor a PPG right sensor. So it's the ECG? same kind. PPG. Oh, PPG. Yep. Which uses light for blood flow. Yes. So this is okay. a PPG sensor here. And what it does is it shines a red light through your skin. Um, and so it's able to detect the blood flow. And so as your heart pulses, you have more blood um, on, on every pulse. So we're able to see the pulses and then the interstitial pulse and interstitial with the red light. And so we're able to know each and every beat of your heart. So then from that, you get heartbeat, you get heart rate variability. Um, and then we also were able to do uh, pulse oxygenation, um, SpO2 readings, the level of oxygen hmm. in your blood. And why, why a PPG instead of the ECG? ECG? Yeah. So in order to do an electrocardiogram, you actually need two points. So an ECG is a metal electrical sensor. Hmm. And to do that, you would need to get two points to get a true ECG. Oh, interesting. So we actually can get, funnily enough, you can do a true true ECG if you put the muse on backwards on your neck, because then you're going to get one sensor touching the back of your neck, like, and you're going to get No, 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 like this way. Sorry, guys. I, I don't know what I'm uh, Oh, like this? And then you're going to get the other sensors touching your collarbone, and you're actually going to be able to oh, get two points. functionally an ECG like that. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. And we discovered that accidentally. Accidentally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So in there we have a PPG. Yeah. Um, and so. Did the did the channels get better on the the gold? The gold is, yeah, is stronger so the, conductivity. It has oh. good conductivity. They're they're both in terms of the signal quality from the forehead, approximately the same. Approximately the same. And then I'm still so impressed by the rubber conductivity. That's that's so interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of material science. That's not simply conduct like carbon rubber. <laughs> there's a lot of things. There's that we to oh do. yeah, that you had to make it more conductive. Because yeah. the the interesting thing about the rubber is that the rubber is what actually makes it comfortable. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why if you f you figured out how to put the there's a stronger electrical signal by the. <clears throat> by the back of the ear than there is by the, by like right here, if there was an EG right here, if there was, a, sorry, a channel right here on the um, inside of the. So the thing is that in order to get good, um, good signal, you need to have really tight contact to the head. Bare skin. Yeah, yeah. on bare skin. Yeah, no, no hair. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, hairs, don't want those microns to get in the way. Yeah. Don't want it to be like 30 microns away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what the PPG lets, sensor lets us do is create new experiences for the heart. So yeah. as the Let's talk about those, yeah. in the original Muse, what's the battery life quick? Um, about the same. About the same, four and a half. Cool. Congrats. Theoretically, it should be better. We'll see. We haven't yeah. been able to test it yet to guarantee it. Yeah. So I, yeah. I will say safely so about the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when your hardware comes out ten days ago. Yeah, exactly. In a boat from overseas. <laughs> it's nuts.
We've had somebody in China for, you know, the last many, many weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the heart sensor allows us to do some beautiful things, whereas the original brain experience is real-time feedback on your brain. We can now give you real-time feedback on your heart, on your breathing, and on your body. You so, can tell posture? Is yes. that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep, posture and movement. And movement. So in the heart sensor, the first experience that we built actually gives you real-time feedback so you hear the sound of your heart like the beating of a drum. Uh -huh. It's a beautiful experience. So most other heart things let you either just see a little blip that's your heart and you're yeah. like, okay, that's my heart, cool. Like that feels medical and monitoring. Um, or it's a number on your wrist, my heart rate is 67 right now. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually a visceral experience of your own heart. And so you're hearing your heart like the beating of a drum and actually being able to tap into your heart's rhythm. And you can do that just sitting too. Totally. And just feeling your heart yourself. Interestingly, not everybody can do that. Is, are so you sure it's just not like we're, we can't, we, like if people train to do it, they could do it, right? So there's data, there's research that shows that some people are able to, when sitting, actually hear the sound of their own heart, yeah. and some people are not. And those who are not probably could train to get there, but just endogenously as, as an activity, there are some people who cannot sense their own hearts. Maybe if... As, you know, if trained. If I'm, trained, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. guessing everybody yeah. can. Yeah, because once the focus gets so damn good, yeah. then... Then you can listen to all sorts of listen to all tiny, sorts of tiny, tiny little things. things yeah. yeah. And so this amplifies the beating and of your you heart. And then you hear it like a drum through yeah. the sound. And then... You can turn that on or off if you yep. want, yeah. And you can begin to understand what affects your heart. You know, and so once I started to tr train with it, I became aware when I was anxious in ways that I wasn't before because I could mm -hmm. actually now feel my heartbeat quickening and be like, oh, okay, this thing's actually causing me stress. I wouldn't have realized now I have this cue for stress. Okay, now I have practices that I can do to calm myself down in the moment and I can start to feel my heart subside. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we also give you breathing exercises. Breathing's the foundation of any contemplative practice, or many contemplative practices. It's also a foundational way to trigger and shift your own physiology. So when you start to slow down your breathing and manage your breathing, it's a cue for your body to go into parasympath parasympathetic nervous system yeah. instead of sympathetic. And so your body starts to relax, your heart rate slows. Actually, as you breathe in, your heart rate naturally increases, and as you breathe out, your heart rate naturally decreases. So that's why a lot of breathing exercises, so that's why a lot of breathing exercises meant to calm you down, teach you to have a long exhale and prolong the amount of time that you spend with your heart slowing down and relaxing your physiology. So with Muse 2, we now have breath sensing technology that's able to actually track your breaths, so you can track each one of your breaths and also guide you with breathing exercises. So there's box breathing. <coughs> So there's box breathing like you would do uh, if you had anxiety, in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. There's stability breathing, short inhale, long exhale, and there's pranayama breathing, you know, fast breathing to energize you. So you learn a set of breathing practices that you're guided through practicing so that when you're then out into the wild and you need to shift your physiology, you're noticing that you're getting anxious or you're noticing that you're too lax and you need to zip yourself up, you now have these practices that you can tap into and your heart, a physiological cue that you can use to guide you as to where you want to be at that moment. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. the, <clears throat> the addition of a, of a PPG sensor to give you this data is, is brilliant. It's a huge addition to the product. Thank you. And then. So then, so then, the, like you were, you were just describing all of the different breathing. You said for <clears throat> for when you become more calm, that your heart rate stabilizes. Your heart rate naturally starts to slow as you become calm. slow. Yeah. yeah, and then you can hear your drum beating louder mm -hmm. and harder, harder when it's when your mind's wandering. Faster. Yeah, faster. Maybe so we we have these exercises. Initially, you do the exercises separately. So you'll train separately yeah. with heart, yeah. with breath, with body. So the body exercise is beautiful. Um, the metaphor we use is that you're sitting inside of a set of wind chimes. And so as you shift about, you're knocking into the wind chimes. So you can actually hear every time you fidget. And it encourages you to find a place of stillness and calm. Oh, interesting. And for a lot of people for whom meditation is difficult or they're just starting the practice, simply learning to sit and finding stillness in their body is the first step. First step, yeah. And so we also have posture <coughs> sensors, because there's a number of different um, accelerometer and gyroscope sensors in the Muse. Posture in the Muse sensors. There is? Yep. 
Solar Rounder and Gyro? Yep. V did one have it? In both of them, yeah. What, wh why is there Accel Rounder and Gyro? So you can do cool things like... Like, like what? Like helping you find a comfortable posture for sitting. Interesting. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. is that is that... So movement is determined by which one? The accelerator? Accelerometer, accelerometer and the gyro. Yeah. Both determine the movement or posture. Yep. Posture. Also, you know, appropriate mm -hmm. head and body relationship. And so then from there we can guide you into stillness. And when you find stillness in your in your body, you can find stillness in your mind much more readily. So you train individually on these exercises. And then ultimately what we're going to build is this harmonious experience where you can simultaneously experience your heart, your brain, your body, your mind. We're not there yet, um, but like that's that's the roadmap. So you get this total body physiology. So you're and working on kind of like part by part. Yeah. So right now yeah. it's part by part, and that's like everybody comes mm -hmm. in through there. And mm -hmm. as you know, the Muse community grows and practices with these pieces, we're going to start to combine them. So we're always expanding the software offering. So when you get a Muse, you know, we update the software like every two weeks, mm -hmm. and so you're always getting new interesting features that continue to grow and shift with you in your practice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then is there another new sensor or fe uh, feature before we show the... Let's show the... Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's show, show the show software. It. Okay, let's show software. So this is the Muse app and these are the features that... With Muse 1, you get mind meditation. So you're able to choose the length of your session. You can do a session as long as you want. It can oh, be cool. hours if you wish. Mm -hmm. Or you can start at just two minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's a really key feature for people. Like totally. It doesn't need to be scary. You can just meditate for two, two minutes. minutes yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and you can choose your soundscape. You can be in the beach, in the rainforest, in the city, city soundscape, and more. Mm -hmm. And then we have a range of meditation guidance. And so this is the Muse Essentials. It's 10 easy lessons that just teach you what is meditation, what are you doing with this device, how do you use it to your best purpose. Um, so simple lessons like training a puppy. Your wandering mind is like a puppy. Be gentle and playful with it. Mm -hmm. um, Deepak Chopra even created some guided meditations for us. And so we have a bunch of content with more content coming. And then when you... That's a good partner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great partner. Deepak. <laughs> Thank you. So then so was that like a little um, written? It's like you can go look at those different... So those are all audio guidance. They're audio so guides. Audio oh, guides. Oh, while you yeah. meditate. So it's like headspace oh. plus biofeedback. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. So it guides you oh, through. Oh, great. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so that's the mind meditation. Mm -hmm. The heart meditation here, you can he hear the sound of your heart like the beating of a drum. And there's, there's only one in the side here, but there's um, a bunch of different lessons that it guides you through, and there's yeah. more coming. In body, you hear yourself inside of the wind chime, so that's that you're right. able to For find stillness. your center. And so that's the accelerator and gyro at work. Yep. And so there's different audio, there's different guidance that's in there. Yeah. And then breath guides your breathing. So, for example, it's on the Breathe in for out, four for six long exhale. So there's a range of different four exercises. Four second inhale, six, yeah, six second, second exhale. exhale. And so it's actually a sound that guides you to breathe in and out. Mm -hmm. So you hear both your own breath and the tone that's guiding your breath. So you end up syncing with the rhythm. It's really, really beautiful yeah, and really cool. powerful. Yeah. And then there's also timed meditation. So if you forget your muse, um, or you don't have your muse available and you want to continue your streak, oh. I'll tell you about streaks in a minute, um, you can just choose a timed meditation and then just use it like a meditation timer. Awesome. So it becomes this friend. This is on an iPad, but it would just be on your own phone. Um, this friend that's always with you that helps you meditate. And then what are the buttons on the bottom and on the top yeah. left, top right? So here you have a range of different settings. So you can change all of the audio. You can change the guidance, the feedback. You can turn off the guidance if you don't want any. You can turn off the feedback if you just want to do your own thing and just track your meditation without feedback. There's lots of different ways to play with it. And then the me screen, here's where you can actually see the history of oh, all of cool. your meditations. Yeah. So let's just go into so one. So there's your streak at the top. Yeah. There's your streak at the top. And streaks yeah. are really powerful. They count totally. the days that you've meditated. Totally, yeah. And we literally have people who've been on like a 60-day streak in day 61, they can't meditate, and they call us. They're like, can you just like smooth it over so I can keep my streak? That's so funny. It's a really powerful way to keep yourself yeah. meditating. Yeah. You know, the kids used to send their, have, send their logins to their friends so that they, <laughs> while they were gone in nature, that someone else could 
keep their to streak, keep their for, streak them. for them. Yeah. Um, Never heard so let's look at the example. That. So this is one data session. So you see, if you go back into your data, you can see all of your different sessions, your mind, your heart, your body. Cool. Let's go into. That's good, yeah. And then you can save your notes in there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, here, so this oh, is what cool. it would look like after you meditated. So during meditation, you get your real-time feedback. And then after meditation, you're actually able to see what your brain was doing during the course calm, of meditation. Calm, active, yeah. And neutral. Yeah. So up here is when you're active, and down here is when you're calm. Mm -hmm. So this individual, mm -hmm. yeah. this individual started in a kind of neutral place, and then they had a thought. Oh. And then they were like, oh, I'm having a thought. Let me bring it back. And then they had another thought. They brought it back. They got even calmer than when they started. They were yeah. able to stay in that calm, had another thought, sort of fought with it, brought it down, stayed in calm, had a thought, and then stayed, brought with it. Mm -hmm. And what we celebrate is we get calm points, and the calm points come just from the amount of time that you're in calm. Mm -hmm. um, recoveries are when you notice that your mind has wandered and you've returned. So when your mind spikes up into active and you're like, nope, I see that I'm wondering, let me bring it back. And so we celebrate the recoveries because it doesn't really matter how many times your brain spikes. The key is that you've noticed your return. That. Recoveries are huge, yeah. Yeah, recoveries are huge. Yeah. And then birds, and that's always everybody's favorite feature. What's when bird? you're able to stay for five seconds or more in calm state, yeah. you get a bird. You hear a little tweet tweet. Oh, and that's that becomes great. this incredibly rewarding, rewarding experience. The funny thing about that is, like, with <laughs> like, and then it's also there to undermine the bird. People are like, yeah. yeah, but it's also there to <laughs> undermine the reward-driven nature of this. So we're like, okay, well, this is reward-driven, but meditation is inherently against rewards. Yeah, yeah. So we created birds as a way to subvert that in a sense. So you sit there, you get a bird. The first time you get a bird, and you don't know what it means. Fine, you just got a bird, doesn't mean anything. As soon as you find out that it was a reward, the next time you get a bird, you're like, oh, I got a bird. And as soon as you get excited, it flies away. So birds are a way of teaching you to be as uninvested in your rewards as your failures. To yeah. not get excited, to not get engaged in it. It's, it's a reward, but it doesn't matter. It's just a sound, it's just a sensation, it's just an experience. So a, a bird, a bird, you hear the bird after five seconds of being in calm, mm -hmm. and then it flies away. Or it stays, it's key, the bird stays there if you stay in calm longer. Yeah, so if you get excited by the bird, the bird flies away. Interesting, so you're training people to not get excited by a reward. Yeah. Okay, I get it. It's our okay. way of subverting the goal-directed nature. Sure, sure. It's like, fine, okay. there's a reward, I don't care. Interesting. It doesn't matter. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting to learn about all this stuff after, you know, hearing all the, you know, do not react, do not <laughs> crave. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's funny. Um, this is really, really well made. Yeah. Thank you. This is well made. You see all your meditations here, you know. See your total minutes, muse points, birds, recoveries, this week's goal, all that good stuff right there. And so. it's a motivational architecture that's meant to keep you coming back and meditating every day. So we start with this, you know, extrinsic, gamified, let's give you awards and badges. Um, and then ultimately, the mere purpose of that is to get you to come back and meditate the next day and the yeah. next day after that. Yeah. And ultimately, all of that stuff melts away and doesn't matter. And what you begin to then experience is the intrinsic reward of meditation. Yeah. The sensation that you have in your life because you meditate and then the desire to come back and meditate ultimately because you feel better. But it takes you a fair amount of time to get there, yeah. to get to the point where you have a significant enough meditation practice to feel the shift in your day. Yeah. Now so is we had to, you know, create a bunch of structure to get you there. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have a Zen master with a stick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me is where you get that info. Mm -hmm. Now, so when you pay two forty nine for the Muse two, the app is free. It's free. And you can't have the app if, or the app is free, if you don't have a Muse. Or the app is also free if you don't have a Muse. So you can just so go anybody in here can just go and, and download. Yeah, headset. download the Muse yeah. and use the timer feature. Timer feature, yeah. Um, and we will have actually more and more guided meditations inside. We uh, just were merged with a company called Meditation Studio. Oh, you did? And, yeah. Awesome. And so they were the number, essentially the number four app in the Meditation App Store. Great. Um, so they Meditation have- Meditation Studio. Yeah. Beautiful, That's beautiful content. They have over 500 different meditations wow. um, for everything you need in life. And so, you know, you need to fall asleep there's a library of 10 meditations to help you sleep mm -hmm. from a range of different teachers. 
you're sitting on the bus and getting frustrated because you're late for your appointment, there's a meditation for that too. Mm -hmm. If you're a student and you're about to take an exam and you're feeling jittery, like there's, there's a collection of meditations for students wow. specifically. And so there's all of these meditations for any moment in your life that That's you need That's really it. targeted, yeah. It's amazing. It's been like, it's become my best friend. Yeah. Whenever I feel, you know, whenever I want some morning joy, like there's yeah. you know, there's a meditation for that. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. There's a you know, there's a meditation for that. That's yeah. a funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a meditation for that. And so all of that content's flowing into into me, so you'll see that flourishing over time. So where does this go? Does this get smaller and more? channels on the headsets more sensors it's gonna stay like this for a while <laughs> yeah 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 what are, what are we talking with like long future stuff because how many people are using this right now tons and tons and tons like, like hundreds of thousands oh, hundreds of thousands there are millions and millions and millions of sessions of sessions but like use. hundreds of thousands of people yeah. are using it yeah there's wow and everybody from you know your average individual using it because they want to sleep better or they're having relationship difficulties or they want to be better in the workplace yeah, yeah. to companies we do corporate yeah. programs and we come in with a complement of muses and get teams musing together I, just, I feel like I don't I like I don't want to be a luddite you know it's like luddites are really bad but like there's just there's also something very interesting like there's so many people being onboarded with this it's fantastically getting more people meditating it's going into corporate environments all this kind of stuff we have yeah. psychotherapists that use it we have we have like thousands and thousands of um, professional psychotherapists psychiatrists life coaches naturopaths who use muse in their practice um, doctors clinics mayo clinic has been running a study using muse for breast cancer patients who've been awaiting surgery Damn. and they get a muse to deal with the stress yeah. of surgery and hopefully also improve their recovery times so in all of those situations, I was a psychotherapist, and so I try to teach my patients to meditate, um, but it never really worked that well. So in all of these situations where a professional wants to teach or encourage their client to meditate, like a doctor, somebody comes in with a condition that you know you should recommend meditation for, um, but the doctor never knows how to meditate, so the patient certainly isn't gonna know how to meditate. They're gonna go home, they're not gonna see their doctor for another four months, and they're not gonna meditate. And now, literally, the doctor can hand the patient a muse and say, hey, like, go do this. And I'm going to know when you do it. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, it. It, with your permission, I can't know if you don't give me permission, but if you want to do this within, the, you know, within a client-patient relationship, yeah. Yeah. Um, then you can give me permission to coach you in this process. Or if not, just take it, take it home, I'll never know, and, but you can go and meditate. And then they get at home and their wife starts using it. And then their kids start using it. I've heard so many beautiful stories of kids who now meditate because of Muse. A, a guy was just telling That's me great. today. Yeah, he has two kids. He brought them home. They like would never do anything their dad wanted them to do. Oh yeah. And he's like, here's this cool thing. <laughs> Try to get some birds. And the kids started competing. And before you know it, they were meditating. And it's been three years, and they meditate regularly now. Yeah, it does seem like there's way too many benefits that outweigh. There's probably the only, I think the old, literally the only bad thing is mm -hmm. that it just, we're no longer relying on just ourselves to get us to states of, of meditation and like eradicating our own suffering and misery. But now we're all using technology to augment headspace and yeah. calm and muse and all the, a lot of the other companies here, which is, which is, I think that's great. Uh, like I said, it's just onboarding so many more people, like you were saying. It's like, it's biohacking is yeah. what it's doing. And so, so we don't want to wait for, for our own abilities. It's like, no, like, let me biohack myself to meditative states. So it's, it's a trajectory of the future. You don't want to be yeah, left behind because you're- So we are still it. relying on ourselves to get to states. So Muse is not zapping you in any way. Totally. It's not, totally. you know, but even Forcing the augmentation of even something as simple as, uh, as hearing uh, storms when mm -hmm. the mind's wandering versus um, having to detect that the mind is wandering yourself. Which you, which you ultimately then need to do in your daily life. So you're going to meditate yeah. for maybe 10 minutes and then you're going to take it off and then you're going to go into your life and then you're going to start doing things you and you're going to gonna take that yeah. meditation practice so with you and you of the have to do it yourself. Anyway, you have to do yeah. it yourself. 99.99999% yeah. 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 of the time. Yeah, you have to do it yourself. You have yeah. to do it yourself. Yeah. This is just showing you what you were supposed to do. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is a good way to look at it. This is a really well explained. You can tell you've been talking about it for 10 years, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And if you don't want to meditate with Muse and you want to figure it out on your own, fantastic. Please, yeah. please, please just go meditate. I yeah. truly do not care how you do it. Whether you use technology or you don't use technology, if you're against technology, no problem. So long as it doesn't mean that you're not meditating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please, it's very beneficial to you. It's very beneficial to everybody around you. So just get into the practice. Wh why not? However works for you is totally fine with me. Yes. Why not? Why not? Like, how many other competitors are there? There's like a motive, right? What are the other ones? Um, so motive uh, is not do? so much a competitor in the meditation yeah. space. They yeah. have a, uh, a headset with more channels to it. Um, it sort of takes up more real estate on your head. Yeah. And they're looking more at like learning cognition. I'm not inside their company, yeah. so I can't tell you exactly what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what about but the also other an ones? awesome company. Yeah. Um, Neurosky, and they really focused on like the sort of single channel, like really kind of low market, low end market, kind yeah. of more gamey. Yeah. Um, with much simpler algorithms. And that's still about it. Okay. And then, so I know it's not going to get smaller for a while, but the general idea is more sensors, smaller units, longer battery life, and more uh, acquisitions or co uh, collaborations with different. Um, companies, it seems like the general like roadmap, onboarding more people around the world to help them use it and their kids use it. So my secret mission is to teach everybody that you don't have to be subject to the thoughts that are in your head about you that say nasty things about you all the time. That's a good one. Like, yeah, yeah we are these amazing, phenomenal beings, but apparently 85% of the world has low self-esteem. Like most of us just feel a little bit unhappy about ourselves and our condition and our world most of the time. Yeah. And that is not because the reality of us, it's the story that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And so you have the opportunity to change the relationship between the thoughts that are in your mind. Like for most people, your thoughts just think you, and that's not actually the way it needs to be. You can shift that relationship with your own thoughts and choose the contents of your mind, choose the story of yourself, and choose what you want to do in your life. Yeah. So. Ariel, that's, that's what that's beautifully said. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It's totally true. Yeah. It's what it, 2,000 years of meditation technology exactly, has been yeah, telling us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, yeah. That we don't need to suffer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that you're building this and that, you know, you're celebrating with the Muse too. It's fantastic. It's great. It's great to have so many people that are caring about this and putting it together. Um, congrats, huge congratulations. We'll have to um, explore doing a promo code. Sure. That would be to. fantastic. Awesome. We'll see how well it does. We'll try and get you guys signed up with Muse as soon as possible. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Ariel, thank you for coming thank on you. To the show. Thank you, my pleasure. Please check the bio for Muse information and for the, and for the link uh, with promo code. We'll explore with slash simulation maybe. We'll see, hopefully that's what it, we'll end up doing. Um, I'll let you know. We'll have to. I'll let you know how it goes using this as well. I'll uh, have to get one and and uh, and give you guys feedback on on how it goes. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, for, you. Thank you for coming onto the show. My pleasure. This has of been course. really really fun. <laughs> thanks. And thanks for onboarding so many people into the meditation experience. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Give us some comments below with your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. And go and build the future. Manifest your destiny into the world. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Peace.